and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Today we will be diving into the journey of creating a DMX controlled spotlight. The first step is to create a schematic for the light source, which you can see my first design for right here. It consists of four high power LEDs connected in series, resulting in a total forward voltage of around 24 volts. The limiting factor for how much light can be output is being able to keep the LEDs cool enough as we will see later in this video. He will be evaluating the thermal performance with and without a heatsink. Two capacitors are placed across the LEDs to limit radiated EMI noise. On the same PCB, a small analog temperature sensor is mounted to be able to keep track of the temperature. This is useful when testing the thermal performance of the design and also to control a cooling fan if needed. The front of the PCB has a space for the four LEDs and a lens. On the back, the temperature sensor and a heatsink can be mounted. Now the PCB and components have arrived and we can start assembling everything. Using a current limited power supply, the PCB is tested and I quickly realize that only two of the LEDs are properly soldered, while the other two haven't properly aligned onto the solder pads. A little heat and poking luckily easily fixed this. It's so satisfying to see the components snap into place. Success! Everything lights up and the rest of the components and connectors can now be soldered onto the board. As the last assembly step, I mounted this lens for focusing the light into a 60 degree light beam. To be able to determine whether active or passive cooling is needed to run the LED lights at an acceptable temperature, we will be measuring the steady state temperature at different power levels. A multimeter is connected to the onboard analog temperature sensor, which outputs a voltage which can be converted to the measured temperature. The temperature is measured at five different power levels and plotted here to get an idea of how many watts can be dissipated without any cooling. Ideally, we should stay below 60 degrees Celsius to avoid meddling any 3D printed parts. During the test, the PCB reached temperatures above 100 degrees which caused the lens to bend and one of the LEDs got so hot that it melted the solder beneath it. This could only happen because the LEDs are soldered with a special low temperature solder paste. Luckily, the LED could easily be reflown, but it is clear that a heatsink is a must if we want to be able to deliver more than 10 watts of LED light. The heatsink is mounted to the PCB with a screw and a little thermal paste. It helps keeping everything cooler by creating a larger surface area which increases the heat transfer to the ambient air. To improve the cooling further, active cooling can be applied by having a fan blow air through the heatsink fins. As seen in the graphs in front of us, just a little airflow makes a huge difference. Ideally, I'd prefer not having a fan, but for now we'll keep it until the maximum LED output power has been decided. 
Alternatively, a larger heatsink can be applied, which will have a larger surface area and create more natural convection, carrying even more heat away. This is it for part one, and in the next part, we will be creating the LED driver PCB, making it possible to control the light output via DMX.